This conference will now be recorded. Ah, uh, thank you. Music. Okay, thank you. Good evening. I'll now call the February 7, 2021 regular virtual meeting of the Economic Development Commission to order at 6.32. My name is Joe Mira, Chair of the EDC, and I will now give a brief introduction to those who are new to the GoToMeeting format. Members of the public, if you are joining the meeting by computer, tablet, smartphone, please enter your name below your camera image. Also, please keep your camera inactive and your microphone mute during the meeting, unless you're called to speak. Since the system does not well uh, do well with multiple speakers and the audio from only one person will be rec recorded, only one speaker will be recognized at a time. If people do not participate respectfully, I will be forced to use the mute all button so that the person who has the floor can be heard. If you are participating by computer, tablet, smartphone, and want to ask a question or make a comment, please indicate this by typing into the chat bar. Uh, when you are called on, please unmute your microphone, activate your camera, introduce yourself, state your name, address, ask your question, or make your comment. If you are participating by telephone, please introduce yourself, your name, address, ask your question, or make your comment. Anyone who refuses to give their name and address, or if someone is not respectful to this commission, will be disconnected and blocked from this meeting. We'll now begin the meeting. Please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, nation under God, individual liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. We're going to open with the uh, the minutes. Does anybody have anything to mention about the minutes? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as drafted. Very good. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? No, it's all unanimous. Okay, thank you. Any uh, any review on the expenses? Any comments? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to the committees. Uh, marketing, that would be Patricia. You're on mute right now. Hi, everyone. Um, we have still been working with uh, Quinnipiac students. Um, they gave us ideas for the website and uh, changes for the website. And I believe there's a link to the website. Um, it was sent to you via email. Um, the kids are doing an amazing job, an absolute amazing job. Um, we really are getting, we're getting more than our money's worth in, out of this entire situation. Um, it is a complete marketing package. Um, it's not just, you know, making the website look nice. It's it's how to get people to go to the website. It's just, it's just they've done a great job, a full job. Even how it's listed, even keywords in order to drive you to the site that are associated with the site. Um, a lot of the back end is what I'm talking about that they've done to prepare us to be noticed and to have people come and see us. Um, Rob, would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, just real briefly for the rest of the committee, I think when you start to look at the website and, and, and some of the other social media platforms that they're developing for us, you're going to see the end result, um, what you're not going to see. And I think at some point in time, hopefully we can uh, 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 fill you in a little bit more on the process that it took to get there. There has been there have been hundreds and hundreds of pages of studies, phone calls, hundreds of hours put into this to understand exactly what type of word, what size lettering, what type of market, what type of social media platforms. 
So um, just a tremendous amount of effort. Tim is instrumental in working directly with them. Um, so uh, kudos to him as well. Um, and it's just a, an amazing process, and it still has a long long ways to go, but um, it's it's far exceeded any of the expectations I think any of us had. So yeah, looking forward to seeing the continued results in that. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Patricia. Anything else? Tim, would you like to comment on the marketing? Yeah, I'll just I'll just add that. Um, for those of you who are not aware, our LinkedIn page for Wallingford EDC is now live. So, um, you know, please go and, and um, you know, uh, connect with us on, on the LinkedIn page. We've sent out one message. And then um, what we're doing is we've got um, uh, a fellow named Jack Hadamer, one of the students. He's, he's our audience development guy on that team. So he is now, um, we, we've, thanks to Anthony, we are uh, we are uh, we have subscribed to a thing. Uh, it's a sales management tool, LinkedIn. So uh, Jack is going to be he's actively doing it now. Because scouring, um, you've heard me speak of S I O R. That's a Society of International and Office Realtors. Um, you've heard me talk about T C I M. It's another commercial real estate group. So uh, we've identified New England, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania as our target geographies. And he is building a database of all those folks. And um, through this LinkedIn tool that, again, Anthony was very instrumental in helping us uh, identify and work through. It's something he uses all the time in his full-time job. So we've launched our first message with really uh, not a lot of people out there. We want to make sure it works. And uh, and now we're starting to build audience. So you know, I'd encourage you, if, if you're inclined to be on LinkedIn at all, to jump in. You know, tag our page, and you'll start sending more messages. So uh, that that is up and running. Um, our email marketing campaign is also up and running. Was it was an e one email sent out to our uh, a lot of our businesses uh, in town last week. We've got another one that we want to send out before the week is over. Um, Lynn has walked um, one of the one of the uh, student team members through using our Mailchimp technologies so that we can. Uh, send stuff out through our, our email marketing. Our next big initiative there is just to build a, a much deeper database uh, with, with email. Um, and then um, our web page design um, should be finished. I'd say go live if not the end of this week, by next week. So stay tuned for that. And then lastly, our college outreach uh, component, uh, our college outreach channel is um, up and running and we'll have our second message going out uh, to our to businesses tomorrow and that's a young lady named Brenna Rose who's at one of the students who has contacted universities um, oh, I don't know there's a half a dozen of them in the region and she's made contacts through telephone calls and emails with the placement offices and all the universities so now we have an in at the placement office and we can connect all of our businesses to the placement professionals at the universities. Most, most all of them are using a, 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 um, a technology tool to take and post jobs and connect uh, job seekers with uh, employers. So uh, that is, is up and running. So the only two that are not up and running of the channel, so, right, so right, again, right now LinkedIn is live, um, email marketing is active, college outreach is active, the web page should be finished by the end of the week. Facebook, um, I put the brakes on that because um, we just have we have to iron out uh, a couple of things. So we're ready for a message, and then I slam the brakes on. Um, and in Instagram, frankly, we really haven't uh, uh, you know gotten deep into Instagram yet, only because we've got so many balls in the air here. I wanted to uh, I asked the, the students for a reprieve on, a reprieve on that. So. Um, anyway, I'm very, very pleased, uh, and again, kudos to the marketing committee, Rob, Patricia, Mark. Uh, it's been a lot of work, and um, you know, I think we're uh, we're we're up and running on some fronts. And um, stay tuned and follow us on all these social media links. Of, and and the other big thing is ideas, ideas for messages. Um, you know, if there's something we should be talking about, we've got some messages in the queue to talk about our electric rates, etc. Uh, but anyway, if you have any ideas that you want to take and, and uh, you think we should be touting, uh, let us know. That's my that's my update, Joe. Okay, uh, Gary. Gary.
Yeah, no, I was just going to I was just going to say I was on the LinkedIn page. Uh, I started following it already. Uh, it's nicely done. And uh, the other thing I was going to say that uh, just as a reminder, I got onto the website with the, you know, going back and forth between the LinkedIn page and the website. And if you're if you're putting a new website up, which we're doing in our company, um, certainly linking to the videos that were done on the um, EDC website. They're, they're such a first class job with the uh, drone videos. Encourage people to link that into their personal websites of their businesses to show about where you're located in the town. It's uh, it's quite impressive. Very good. good idea. Thank you. Okay, uh, Patricia, did you have anything else to add? We also, my, my husband wishes he had this button where I, I'd stop talking. Um, but uh, we, also, we also mentioned um, the forum, the Wallingford Forum. Uh, I remember when we left, we, we were going to start placing things on there without receiving any information. We discussed that, right, Tim? Getting on the Wallingford Forum? Yeah, so what's what's happened, Patricia, is, and I'll share with the commission, um, you know, we wanted our Facebook page to be a one-way communication tool. All right, we post, but we don't necessarily allow for the feedback because, you know, there's a concern that people will use it, you know, inappropriately and start, you know, chiding on whatever. It just It's just a conversation that can go awry so fast. Um, and I was led to believe that that was, was uh, doable. Um, Brenna actually re reached out to me this morning and said that um, she does not believe it is doable that you have to accept comments even on a business Facebook page. So we have, we actually set up a meeting for tomorrow morning with her, Professor Tomchik, because, you know, at this stage of the game, you know, we've, we've built this on the premise, um, you know, based on research that said we could uh, restrict comment, and now I'm being told that we can't. So I just said, okay, time to stop, regroup. Uh, so if anybody here knows any different, let me know, because I don't, but, um, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. So, so all of the forums that she had taken and, and was prepared to uh, launch us onto, um, I kind of put the brakes on. You know, we, we deal with a number of controversial issues. You know, these parking lots that are, you know, you know, whether it be the one down by the old brothers lot or the one behind Simpson Court or Wallace Avenue, to us as economic developers, you know, we see these things as very clear. Uh, but we know in every case they've become controversial. Um, we see expanding uses in the IX zone and the I-5 zone as an opportunity. Uh, other people see it extremely, you know, um, you know some, some people are very critical about it. So uh, it, it, if we start launching a Facebook page, I, I, my fear is that people will take what our message is, they will deviate from the message and use it as a forum to start you know, you're just chiding on on, um, on things. And, and not that that's a bad thing necessarily, but we're just not equipped to be responsive on those things. And I just don't want the conversation to run away. Tim, 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 if I, if, Tim yeah. if I can inter 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 interrupt you. Uh, the fact is that this meeting is open every month to the public, and this would be the forum for any feedback. And there is no need need to open another channel. I agree with you. So if people have a comment or criticism or any remarks on what EDC is involved in, we welcome their input at these meetings. I'm sorry, Tim. No, I was done anyway, Joe. So that's, that's Jeff, Patricia and Rob. You, you weren't aware that I had put the brakes on Facebook because they just did it this morning. So, uh, but stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, Patricia, I guess you're done? I am done. Thank you for doing that, Tim. That was very smart of you. Things can get very nasty going back and forth. So yeah. it is good that you put the brakes on. And I am all done. Thank you. And as I said, we welcome the input, but there's a pl place, time and place, as the saying goes. And this is the place, and this is the time. Um, we just don't have the manpower to keep up with uh, other other avenues. Um, I want to thank the marketing committee. I think you're doing a terrific job. I'm really excited to see this thing come to fruition. I mean, it's first of all, 
I think you're light years ahead of where I figured you to be by this time. So again, kudos on the job you're doing. Uh, planning and zoning. Uh, Jim, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I, I'd like to start off just by thanking the, the members that attended the um, uh, town council meeting, uh, the last town council meeting. It was, uh, as you know, Joe, it was a, a long drag and uh, we were there and we hung in and, uh, you know, it appears that it went fine and, and it appears that it'll be helpful to the merchants. Um, you know, I guess it's the uh, stipulation is whether or not the lease is signed. So uh, I just, again, I wanted to say thank you to those members that were there. I, I think it's helpful that we show up and uh, voice our opinion. Um, that's uh, Tim, do you have anything you want to add to that? or? Um, Before we go to Tim, uh, Hank, if you'd want to kind of make a comment. Hank? Sure. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Joe. Other than to, for those who may not uh, know that the, uh, they ultimately did pass the um, <laughs> for the uh, lease at Simpson Court and the parking uh, to get the parking done, <clears throat> and also uh, at the two uh, parking lots uh, back in Wallace um, there. So um, it was uh, it was a lot of back and forth for sure, but um, eventually it did pass. Thank you. Hi, right, Tim, did you want to add anything, please? Uh, nope, nothing. I won't. I'll just cover a couple of things in my report, but I think they covered it fine. Yeah, I think the meeting was a lot longer than it probably should have been, but everyone had their uh, points of view aired, and it was approved, and uh, I think it's going to be a real benefit to the community at large, both to the downtown and the overall community. And as we've said before, people visiting from either businesses or from Choate. And I'm not talking about Choate trying to impress Choate. What I'm referring to when I mention Choate is that you never know the opportunities that are lost. I mean, I know it's maybe fantasy world, but you may get an executive from another co uh, company uh, visiting a student in Choate and take a look at the town and say, you know what? this is a place we want to be, or this is a place I want to have a branch office, or this is a place, whatever their reason is, I'd like them to walk away saying this is a place. And I think that parking lot will add to the value of our town and to the perception of the, the visitors. So I think it's a win all the way around. And I think it's a big thank you to all the committee, to staff for, for all the work, Tim, for all the work he's done in laying the ground work for this, the staff, the uh, commissioners by showing up at the meetings. And uh, we also had a downtown group that put together a, a great presentation uh, under WCI and the downtown organization did a fantastic job. Uh, so I think it all went well, all the hard work paid off and uh, we just got to see the, uh, the project completed and we'll follow up on it. Again, thank you. Uh, retention. Rosemary, hey, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. Yes. So before we move on, can I just add one anecdote? Please. You talk about, you know, people from out of town. So some of you may have seen an article in the Hartford Business Journal that um, talked about a West Coast um, investor buying a, a relatively large piece of industrial property in Wallingford. Uh, and he, this fellow bought 135 North Plains Industrial Road. And the reason he came to Wallingford is because he's got a youngster at Choate. And he came to town and the, the youngster started school at Choate. He's been back and forth. He's taken a liking to the town. And it took him a couple of months, but he bought his first piece of investment property. This guy's apparently very well healed and owns a lot of West Coast properties. But he bought 135 North Plains Industrial Road and he's got his sights on a couple of others. So to Joe's point, you never know who's looking, so you always want to look right. You always want to look good, so perfect example. 
Thank you, Tim. And this wasn't rehearsed for everybody's edification. <laughs> and uh, Kathy, Lily, I see you're on the uh, on the screen there. Again, I want to thank WCI for all the hard work they did for putting that presentation together. You did a fantastic job. Thanks, Joe. Uh, it was a team effort. Good. And it worked. Uh, retention. Gary, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Um, <laughs> I didn't see Rose, but uh, we, we recently had our meeting last week um, uh, for retentions and incentives. And just to add to the, the comments with regard to the marketing program, one of the comments we made during the course of the meeting was the good spinoffs that will come from this program. Uh, we in retentions and incentives are going to be, you know, sitting back with a, a complete review of the marketing program and see what data comes out of there that we could use in uh, promoting more programs. Um, the other thing we went through uh, the uh, previous minutes that were approved and everything, but uh, we we talked about the business. Um, the business properties that were Tim did a staff did a review on the business properties that were uptown. We wanted to know we wanted to get an update as to where those programs were. Uh, there were a couple of properties that were um, supposed to be expanded or looking to expand. Uh, Tim did a review with them. Uh, one of them, as you face the post office, is the building to the right of the post office um, that's still going forward. Um, you know, they're obviously they're going to be waiting until the springtime. And I guess the other property over near the um, former police department, uh, where the one of the buildings that was going to be taken down near the package store behind it, that's still going forward. So it's good to see that they're not sitting back uh, waiting for something else to happen. And uh, those programs are moving forward. Um, I wish our incentive programs brought those forward, but they didn't. But that's OK. It's still good when things happen without the incentive programs. Um, we also looked at, um, Tim did a review of the uh, business relief programs that are available to the state. Um, I was enlightened on a couple of them. I was really kind of amazed where um, some of these programs are almost automatic. Uh, I know Tim could probably speak to them a little bit, but the, uh, the, the ability to get funding out to well-needed uh, business owners who are suffering because of the pandemic, um, some checks are going out automatically based on you know, losses and look back at uh, previous year and where they are and how they reported. So that was interesting to see. Um, uh, it was, quite frankly, it was a, a nice relief to see there was a proactive move on some of those things. Um, other than that, um, we did go through, um, whether, well, we didn't talk about it in this meeting, but at this point, we're pretty curtailed on doing the exit interview programs um, based on the electrical uh, hookups. Um, that we didn't see much coming out of that this time, but we'll probably bring that back up when things get back to whatever normal is. Um, and our next meeting is scheduled for February the 25th uh, at 9 a.m. And everybody's invited to come listen to us. And that's about it. Any comments? Thank you, Gary. I'm sorry. Um, does anybody have any questions for Gary? Make him hard? No? Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Try it. Is this a Jeopardy round? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thank you. Chairman's report. I'm going to just give a quick update. And it seems like it's turning into the Hubcap report. But uh, since EDC is involved in it, I think it's important to keep everybody current. Uh, we're talking about, and hopefully we'll know within the next couple of weeks, a limited opening, reopening of Hubcap. I would like to have a full-blown opening, but you can't always get what you'd like. Uh, but we're also starting up some of the pipelines. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the uh, exploratory pipeline. That's the one where we bring people in. It's really going to be useful, I think, for, uh, for a lot of reasons for the community. And for especially the high school students, uh, seniors who are graduating and are not pursuing higher education and really not sure what direction she, they want to go, we're going to have speakers, programs from uh, four or five occupations, services, hospitality, 
medical, of course, uh, manufacturing and service. Uh, I may have said that already. Uh, so we hope to have that sometime in March kicked off. Uh, I'm trying to, well, I've been talking to about to my, uh, we had started a small business council uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, and I'm just trying to reach out to all of them. I started today trying to revise that because I think the time now for a small business council is really more important probably than it was in March because a lot of people are looking at that as an alternative. Uh, and it would be nice to put something like that together. And one of my pet projects, and I'm, I'm going to look for funding. So if anybody uh, has any resources or would like to donate, I, I need money to run newspaper ads because I want to run a program for the businesses that are out of business. Uh, yes, I want to help the businesses that are in business. I want to help the small business. But we also can't ignore the fact that we had businesses where people put their heart and soul into their business for 10, 15, 20 years uh, and through no fault of their own uh, had to close it. Uh, and most of them don't realize the uh, transferable skills that they have to re-enter the workplace. And I'd like to put a program together for that. My problem with that is it's not hard putting the program together. What's hard is how do I find these people? And the only the only option I had, and if someone has better, please let me know, is to run a few newspaper ads, uh, letting them know what's available. Um, so anyway, that's that's what we're up to, and I take any suggestions, any inputs, uh, with a grain of stuff. Okay, decide. I really would like any suggestions or inputs, whether it's today, tomorrow, or the next day. Please don't hesitate to reach out, or if you have a pipeline or a training program that you think is important for the community, would be happy to take a look at it. With that, I can turn it over to Tim if there's no questions. Tim, you're on. Okay, very good, Joe, thanks. Uh, several other things on my report, I'm assuming everybody has it, uh, have been discussed already, a couple of things I'll touch on. Some good news items, um, the Proton Beam Therapy Center has been, uh, went through the wetlands approval process successfully and planning and zoning successfully. So um, now they're just still waiting for this, the certificate of need from the state of Connecticut. They expect to have that any time now. And um, that is the last green light they need to take and, and get things going. So um, this again, $72 million project, it is the biggest project that we have active right now in, in town. And um, um, I'm very confident that it's gonna happen. So it's all good. Um, I also wanted just to mention that uh, I, th I think most are aware, uh, certainly those on the uh, uh, Planning and Zoning Liaison Committee are aware that the uh, discussion about um, expanding uses in the I-5 district, as well as reducing the um, open space requirements in the I-5 and I-X zones, are, that's been put on hold. Uh, there was, uh, there was a um, public hearing in December at Planning and Zoning Commission um, and then in January, uh, the mayor, myself, our economic development, the mayor's office, law, and, and uh, the town planner all asked the commission to take and, and um, close the public hearing and, and allow us to have more internal conversations about uh, potential, potentially expanding development and uh, the open space. So stay tuned. That's still a, a work in progress. Um, I thought you'd be interested. There's probably no question I get asked more often than is, is what's going on on the Bristol Myers site. Is Amazon going to go there? So we know that Amazon does have a sales contract on that site. We also know that they went in front of uh, wetlands in November. They opted not to go back in December. They opted not to go back in January. And at this point, uh, as of um, Friday, they were not on the agenda for this month. Flynn, did you see the wetlands agenda today by chance? You're, you're on mute. Yes, uh, Wednesday's agenda is on the website. I don't think that that project is on there. I'm pretty sure it's not. Erin said on Friday it wasn't. She didn't expect it to be. So 
So uh, it just raises a little, uh, some question marks um, as to the status. Um, and uh, we, I guess we'll just kind of wait that one out. Um, I just wanted to mention also that, you know, the uh, project about the um, CT rail and the train horn noises, um, uh, our uh, Corporation Council, Jana Small, has been just a champion in trying to make sure that uh, we, we, you know, determine whether those train uh, horns are above the decibel levels that um, are within, you know, the perimeters set by the uh, by the railroad. Uh, we did get a preliminary report from the railroad saying that given their testing, those horns were uh, louder or outside of the acceptable decibel range. So um, I guess that's good news in that, you know, we've been screaming saying the blessed horns are too loud. And they're, so they tested them, I give them credit, they've been very cooperative. And they're saying, you know, guy, you guys are right, they're, they're, they're too loud. So uh, that's being addressed. Uh, also, we're trying to get the Quinnipiac and Hall Avenue at grade crossings to be treated as one crossing. Um, so that would cut, you know, five horn blows out of the every single time a train passes. So, um, and then we're also, they're also looking to um, uh, potentially put the um, way signing uh, horns. If you go over by CVS Drugstore on Route 5, you go over that crossing, you'll actually see a, a, a horn on a, you know, on a post. Uh, and when the train is approaching that at grade crossing, it does not blow the whistle from the engine. That whistle that's on, on that post blows because it's, it's tripped by a trigger in the, in the tracks. Um, and that's, that's called a way, so way sounding horn. And the sound is not projected outwards, but it is aimed down. So it's not nearly as, as uh, egregious as uh, the uh, horns coming from the engine. So without getting into too much of the detail, um, you know, there's there's a lot of activity and energy and cooperation by the railway. So uh, nothing happens without their cooperation. So know that that is something that we're still actively working on. Um, as far as the uh, the report on our town center, I know Kathy's on the call, but uh, I will report what she has given. You won't see it in my report because uh, um, we just didn't I didn't get it in on time. But Kathy reports that uh, on the corner of North Orchard Street and Center Street where, um, oh gosh, the, the design, design, uh, design interiors two or something was there before, DH2, I think it was. Uh, that's gonna be a small grocery store. So Kathy is still waiting uh, you know, for some details on that, but uh, that's supposed to be opening sometime in March. So stay tuned. Uh, Jake's on Center Street has closed. Uh, the building was purchased by a uh, gentleman named Michael Gould. Uh, he operates Michael's Deli and Catering in Cheshire. And uh, he's opening a chop house with an Italian flair, according to Kathy, and they plan on opening in March. So we'll see a couple of new Center Street tenants there. Excuse me, Tim. Yep. Actually, um, the building was not sold, just the business was sold. And um, the building is still on the market. So he yep. just purchased the restaurant portion. Very good. Thanks for clarifying that, clarifying that Kathy. All right. And then, um, WCI is hosting some free social media classes for downtown businesses, um, which, you know, at the, the meeting that I attended along with uh, Mark Jingris a, a month or so ago, um, the you know, best way to help the businesses is to help them do business in this new environment. So um, I give Kathy all the credit for, you know, taking and, say, and saying, let's educate the people that are not real familiar with how to do business. Um, you know, or use social, social media to grow their business, let's teach them how to do it. So she's, uh, she's all over that. And then uh, WCI also has three Valentine Day promotions uh, that they're uh, working on to drive business to some of our, our downtown businesses. So lots going on and, and uh, uh, Kathy is, in my opinion, uh, all over, uh, all over doing a great job. And Joe, unless there's any other questions, that's, that kind of concludes my report for this evening. I don't see any questions. Um, anything for the uh, any other community business? Yeah, just just not a man. <laughs> I can yeah. let you get back out and shovel. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had enough for today. Tomorrow's another day. But anyway, um, community business. 
Uh, I can tell you personally that over the last 30 some odd years, that this commission has changed drastically. We are involved in the community uh, be way beyond economic development. And I would like to throw it out to all the members, just something to think about. We are known as the Economic Development Commission. And I really think at this point, and with everything we've done and touched on, we should change our name to the economic, economic and community development. It really, I think it's a softer touch. I think people look at us a little bit like all we want to do is create tax revenue. And we go way beyond that. All the work that's done, half of what was mentioned tonight was community development. And, um, you know, from Tim, uh, from WCI, from Joe, everybody, everybody has touched on it. This commission, believe me, in 30 years has really changed. And I think we should, you know, we just think about it. It's something I wanted to table, and I think we should be the economic develop, uh, economic community development, because we are developing the community as well as the economics. Just a thought. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Joe, I will add, I, I, uh, Joe, I, I neglected to say that uh, we are actively interviewing the we being, being the mayor, myself, uh, and the mayor's administrative assistant, but we're actively interviewing candidates for, uh, for Lynn's position. So stay tuned. Thank you. Jimmy, you do you really add, Joe? The other thing I was going to add, Joe, maybe we can, maybe we can make the uh, when we do get the horns fixed, uh, we can call it the Jim Wolf horn blowing uh, <laughs> action plan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Reluctantly, I will take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> if someone has the, uh, I'll make a you have to. Did you say something, Rob? I was just seconding your motion, but somebody else. Well, I'll, 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 make make I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. All right. So Pat That's made it. Rob seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Have a good night. Take it easy with that snow. Don't don't overexert yourself. Don't go uh, yet. Call you you Lynn's waving. Lynn's waving. Lynn's waving. What's up, Lynn? Who Lynn, was, I'm sorry. Who was the second for the? Adjournment. Is that you? Rob. 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 I did. Rob. You know, first. first or second. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was Don Rowe. Oh. <laughs> Holy Christ. Mr. Rowe, how the hell are you? I'm very well. It was so nice tuning in and seeing you all. Hey, Don. Although I don't envy your condition with your, uh, what do they call that? A nor'easter, huh? <laughs> There's a scary guy from the past. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. you stop recording? Maybe. Yes. Yeah, stop, stop recording. recording. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Stop recording now.